So greetings, everyone. This is a historic day, January 22nd, 2021, because today a global treaty is about to take force worldwide. This is the treaty to ban all nuclear weapons. And now here's from a media release that the treaty organization has sent out, and I quote, Although the treaty legally binds only nations that choose to accede to it, it establishes new global norms. I want to emphasize that. It establishes new global norms and is widely seen as a major contribution to international humanitarian law. It's complementary to a couple of treaties that have gone before it. And of course, uh, it now leads us to a kind of impasse where all nine nuclear armed states and their allies uh, are boycotted the negotiation of the treaty and, and are continuing to uh, endorse it. Another major breakthrough just recently is that indigenous led movements are credited with a huge victory because President Biden, yeah, to just run that one around in my mind, President Biden, has rescinded the Keystone XL pipeline, did that from day one. So here's a quote from an eight-year-old Shawnee Ray, who was with a group of Native American activists protesting it in, in South Dakota. And Shawnee says, our communities have been fighting KXL for over a decade, tooth and nail, in the dirt and in the courts. And I guess that's where nonviolence has to happen in the courts when it can and in the dirt when it cannot. And it reminds me of President Johnson saying to MLK when Martin Luther King had requested and handed in a proposal for a Voting Rights Act, Act uh, President Johnson said, that is a great idea now, go out and make me do it. Related action, uh, there's this Enbridge line uh, going through Minnesota and water protesters have taken the step of chaining themselves inside the pipe and calling on the Biden administration to put a stop to the construction, showing that in doing so, the administration will uphold their claims uh, on climate justice. And uh, several of those water protesters were recently arrested, actually not too recently, back on the 9th of January. And it's going to be interesting to see what the upshot of their arrest and this protest in general is. There have been a number of big marches claiming uh, to be part of this uh, million militia march on Washington but they petered out. Only a handful of people showed up and around the nation. Apparently there's uh, clashes amongst organizers that are leading to this lack of participation, but it reminds me of the great poem by the modern Greek poet, Gilgios Seferis, which uh, the title of it is Perimenantas tus varvarus, waiting for the barbarians. There, uh, people in the capital are waiting for the barbarians to arrive, they never arrive. And the last line of the poem is, oh, well, too bad. Those people would have been some kind of solution. That does not apply to us. So uh, coming up in the future, March 19th will be the next International Day of Climate Strikes. And it's called Fridays for Future, uh, March 19th. They are demanding immediate action. So what I find myself wondering is uh, whether they have other tactics as well. As we all know that uh, protest marches, which are often the first line of recourse that people reach out to when they get justifiably, uh, even uh, righteously indignant about some kind of injustice, they often reach out to protest marches. and. Protest marches uh, are modestly effective at best, and people should never go into them without, on the one hand, monitors, and without, on the other hand, being it part of a long-term strategy with many other options, where you're always willing to negotiate when that possibility comes up. So again, that's something to watch uh, come March. 
and possibly that we can reach out to some of the people in Fridays for Future and ask them what they're coming up with. Recently, as you may be aware, Choose Democracy has folded down. It uh, was an organization that was by, quickly put together by two people, Daniel and Daniel Hunter and uh, uh, another young woman whose name I don't remember, and Jenny and she, they uh, were able to accomplish incredible things that where they had planned for 400 trainings across the nation to protect the democratic process, they ended up having, I think, more than 5,000. And it's a very good example of an organization that was called into existence for a particular purpose. It served that purpose, and now it's disbanding. But the information and the experience that is gained in this, on the whole, quite successful action, that stays with us and just reorganizes itself around other issues. Now, uh, recently, the Department of Defense tweeted a video of Martin Luther King uh, saying that they are going to build an environment honoring his legacy. Uh, this was, of course, about environmental issues. And what they sidestepped here is his famous protest against the war in Vietnam and his citing of the triple evils of militarism and poverty and environment. So let me give you a bit of a quote from King. He said, a true revolution of values. I want to emphasize that again. A true revolution of values will lay hand on the world order and say of war, this way of settling differences is not just. This business of burning human beings with napalm, filling our nation's homes with orphans and widows, of injecting poisonous drugs of hate into the veins of peoples normally humane, of sending men home from dark and bloody battlefields, physically handicapped and psychologically deranged, cannot be reconciled with wisdom, justice, and love. And then his famous conclusion, a nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. Of course, now we know that uh, the psychological derangement was called uh, perpetration induced traumatic stress by a colleague of ours, Rachel McNair, and is now referred to by the military itself as moral injury. Well, it will be very interesting to see how this awareness of moral injury and the growing, slowly growing awareness that it is inevitable, even if it doesn't show up in psychologically measurable parameters, uh, conflicts with the basic purpose and principles of the military and how we will resolve that conflict. This is why uh, at the Meta Center, we lay so much stress on unarmed civilian peacekeeping. It's a very, very successful institution of intervening across borders or in, it, within domestic settings, intervening in conflict with trained nonviolent actors. It's very small, but it has been recognized by the UN and even in some parts of the State Department and it is a, a visible, obvious alternative to war and gets us out of that paradox. Let me go on to quote something similar from King's daughter, Bernice King. She's been speaking out against the executions, that uh, flurry of executions that ended the very vindictive presidential regime we've just exited from. And she here is quoting her famous mother and says, who said, as one whose husband and mother-in-law have died, the victims of murder and assassination, I stand firmly and unequivocally, unequivocally opposed to the death penalty for those convicted of capital offenses. An evil deed is not redeemed by an evil deed of retaliation, close quote. 
Now, uh, for this type of paradox of dilemma, we uh, what nonviolence has to offer is restorative justice. It's one of our great gifts that nonviolence makes to the world. It's the only way out of this cycle. And it is statistically shown incidentally that the introduction of capital punishment increases homicides and similar violent crimes by a slight but a noticeable margin. And so the only way out of this cycle is why what nonviolence does everywhere, breaks cycles of violence by introducing nonviolence, an entirely different force. So let me now um, close with some resources and trainings that are coming available. Meta Peace Team is planning to send a summer team to Palestine. And applications for that are due on February 12th. And there will be other teams as one in April coming up after that. Of course, all of this has to be balanced against the demands of the pandemic. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this uh, Meta Peace Team, which is an example of unarmed civilian peacekeeping that I was just talking about, in this case, cross-border, how it will work out in this new pandemic environment. Well, no longer all that new. Now, campaign nonviolence is started yesterday. Uh, I think you can still jump on. It's a six week course called Nonviolent Campaigns 101, a toolbox and strategy for people power, unquote. And that is a superb offering for the times. And it's facilitated by Rivera Sun and Henry Cervantes. Uh, Rivera said this, quote, Henry and I are excited to see campaign nonviolence and nonviolent city organizers and other groups signing up for this workshop. We'll cover great tools for advancing our work in those programs. If you've ever participated in Action Week, join this course. And she closes the quote by saying, you'll love it, <laughs> which is probably true. There are also some uh, very, very useful looking online courses beginning uh, next month in February, one called Building Bridges, Not Walls, Nonviolent Communication in Action. So nonviolent communication is an application of nonviolent principles at the lower, and this is my comment now, at the lower end of the escalation curve where parties can still communicate with one another verbally. And then on February 2nd, there'll be a course on mindfulness for chaotic times. And uh, all of that will be uh, made available, I believe, at Pace Bene, and you can look them up there. So there's a really wonderful roster of courses coming from there and also from DC Peace Teams. Then there's a project which has been conceived by Code Pink and produced in partnership with the Independent Media Institute. And this is a project called Local Peace Economy. Local Peace Economy, not a subject we've had a lot of time to talk about on this program. And they say this, quote, every transaction we make in our daily lives ultimately contributes toward building a peace economy or a war economy, a world of compassion and well-being or a world of indifference and violence. The peace economy model encourages us to reinvest in our local communities. We cannot make these changes without the foundational building blocks of the very peace we are seeking. So again, looking like Martin Luther King's poverty, including poverty in his uh, uh, roster of injustices that have to be met with. Now, though also, this is uh, a little bit different. There will be a day of action in protest of the war on Yemen on January 25th. And you can look up uh, where they might be occurring, should you wish to join one, on actionnetwork.org. So there are two uh, foreign policy issues uh, in that region of the world that 
uh, President Biden is now being called upon to address. One of them is the war in Yemen, which in which our complicity is uh, supplying arms and other kinds of support to Saudi Arabia against the Houthi rebels, uh, which is producing an enormous humanitarian catastrophe. And the other is uh, the simmering conflict in Western Sahara, the uh, taking of the Sahrawi region by Morocco has created one of the last colonial holdings in on the African continent. And the Sahrawis have been mounting a largely nonviolent protest against that occupation for a long, long time. So and a letter has recently been sent to the new president, President Biden, uh, asking him to rescind the recent recognition of Morocco's uh, occupation of Western Sahara that the Trump administration organized in order to, well, to sort of, I'm going to use a strong word here, to uh, bribe Morocco into jumping on the bandwagon of Near Eastern uh, governments, Arab governments that are uh, entering into peace negotiations with Israel. So there you have an example of a worthwhile goal in the long term, peace negotiations with Israel, but uh, a, a violent means of getting there. And so that shows once again, for nonviolence to really be nonviolence, the means and ends must be in complete consinity. Well, that is the news and some of the resources for today. I'm well aware that this is not a complete overview. It's just samples that we have taken because they illustrate examples of what's going on and certain principles that are involved. So thank you very much until our next program.